Market Research 101, Testing Your Market Offline. The reason why I suggest testing your market offline is because some places like Facebook groups, uh, Facebook new feeds are often where people do their market research. And if you haven't read the research and news lately, Facebook groups and Facebook is just oversaturated and a lot of people get overwhelmed and they get very fatigued with what they see in their newsfeed. And they are spending less time on uh, Facebook, for instance, and spending more time on places like Instagram and or even just less on these digital platforms because they get a lot of surveys, they get survey fatigue, they get market research fatigue, and they're just tired of the engagement on Facebook groups and they would rather completely ignore um, these kinds of surveys. That's not to say that you can't, it just depends on what you're testing and what you're serving because some groups may already have rules and regulations around survey and market research and market testing. So you want to be really cognizant of that and um, try a different approach. So this approach talks about testing your market offline. So testing your market offline, here's some examples that I give you. You can start with meetups, coffee shops, bars, and schools. The most important principle about market research is finding out where your target market frequents. For instance, uh, meetup.com is a great platform for testing your market. There are so many different groups for very different interests, you can easily find um, a group depending on who you're targeting. So for example, if you're targeting and you want to build a business around teaching um, freelancers, um, teaching freelancers how to uh, find clients, then you might wanna look for meetups that are targeting freelancers. So I would suggest going on meetup.com and looking at like a freelancer meetup and seeing if there's like uh, an organizer who you can reach out to and see uh, when the next meetup is and maybe go there with the intention of talking to people. Now, just be careful that you don't go to a meetup and just start, you know, saying that you're selling a course, you're building a course. You might just approach it this way and say, hey, um, you can do this either ask if you can make an announcement before the meetup or you can say um, you can ask if you can make an announcement after the meetup or just you know talk to as many people as possible i definitely prefer the first method uh, or second method over the idea of just talking to people because it's a lot more faster and it also brings people to you rather than having you going to have to chase people uh, the reason why that's advantageous and beneficial is because then you don't have to you know hurry through conversations and know that you can just tell people who are coming to talk to you about you know what you want to sell your course on and say hey you know i'd love to talk to you but i'm busy talking to this person how about you uh fill out this um piece of paper with your name and email address and we'll set up a time to talk and then as you grab those that's really effective because you've grabbed leads and you've grabbed their contact information and you can follow up with them in terms of your market research. What you might do then is to set up a focus group online or offline and start asking questions about what the biggest challenges for freelancers are. And a lot of freelancers will say, well, it's you know productivity, it's you know habits in terms of getting up and you know getting out of my pajamas, um, and then also uh, finding a space to work because it feels really lonely. So if you find that that's what the common feedback is, then that's how you know that that's what your course is about. And the important thing is to sort of approach this process asking really good questions. And it sounds really simple, but asking effective questions rather than questions that give you and result in yes or no answers. Because if you want to you know, build a course, you're going to need lots of quality feedback. Uh, for example, if someone you sell someone, you know, what is the biggest is is finding clients your biggest challenge and someone will say yes and someone will say no. And then you're going to have to follow up and be like, so tell me more about what, you know, is hard about finding clients. And so you can save yourself a little bit of time and say, you know, what's the biggest challenge to making money as a freelancer? And then you start to get a lot more uh, really rich information, um, really valuable information from them that can then help you uh, target what your first course will be about. It's also important that in this process, you spend a lot of time listening. Oftentimes, we have really great ideas about what our course will be, what it can be, and what it could be. But 
we find out that based on the feedback and our research, that that's not what people are interested in. Freelancers aren't interested in, you know, getting out how to get into better habits because they tried it and it doesn't work for them. They're interested in something more deeper. And so what you might consider then at that point is to focus on solving their problem with a course that they actually need rather than what you want. And that's really the goal of market research is to focus on what your audiences want rather than what you want. So I hope this was helpful and leave a comment or question if you have any further questions. Um, there'll be another video on sort of more in depth about testing your market offline. Thanks again.